Welcome back to the realm of unpopular opinions. Today I will be doing my October TBR and I hope you enjoy it because a lot of these were catered specifically to have spooky vibes, spooky characters, spooky events happening. I really wanted to amp up the halloween -y spirit even though a lot of them were actually just this last weekend. None of them were throughout October, but all in all, this was a pretty decent month, reading-wise, and let's just get into the video. Okay, obviously that intro was <laughs> like that on purpose. Now let's just get into the actual wrap-up. Now, firstly, I finished The Great Hunt, but I kind of talked about that one in the last wrap-up, if I'm not mistaken, or... Yeah, it was at the beginning of October, so I think I talked about it in the last wrap-up or the September wrap-up. So we're just going to move on. The first thing that I reread were the Long John Silver comics. Now, in, in order, it was Lady Vivian Hastings, then it was Neptune. The Emerald Labyrinth and Guyana Kapak. Now, I will hold up my favorite one, which is Neptune. This is basically uh, Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island, but sort of an homage to it in graphic novel form. I think this is French. The original is in French. But in any case, I read this about two years ago. I absolutely loved it. And now I wanted to reread it because I was, for some reason, really in the mood to read Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Plant, which was the next book that I will talk about. So I picked this up first to refresh my memory and get into the piratey vibe, and I loved it so much. Like, the art in this is absolutely stunning. Just to showcase some of it, like, it is just stunning. This beginning frame, I wish, honestly, I could just hang up somehow and frame it. Like, the art is so pretty that it's a little bit rude. <laughs> Like, I wish a lot of graphic novels had this art style. I'm going to try and find something else, but anyway, you, you get the picture. This was tra translated. I read it translated. Obviously, it's not in English. I'm pretty sure it exists in English, but I think the original is French. I could be wrong, but I think it's French. I don't know what else to say about this. This is essentially about Long John Silver, who is the main, no matter what you say, he's the main character in... Robert Louis Stevenson's book, the most interesting character, the one that everyone loves. He is what great characters should really be because the modern interpretation of gray morality is mostly they are the worst, but they are the best of the worst. He is just actual gray morality. Like he makes certain decisions that you agree with, but you also get why it would be gray. Like, he's just a very interesting character. I don't want to get into into it too much because next up we have actual Treasure Island, but this is a four part graphic novel that I think is really worth it. And I loved it a lot. So I do highly, highly recommend it. And now just so we can connect it, I finally read why does this sheet keep coming off? <laughs> this is not good. I finally read Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. I have wanted to read this since I bought this compendium. This has all seven of his works and I read Jekyll, Jekyll and Hyde and Treasure Island. I didn't think I would dislike it because I already know that I love his writing style. He is one of those classic writers who just doesn't care about how he should write because it's not long. He skips a lot of stuff. He gets straight to the point and just says what he wants to say. Like, they're gonna go on a trip and he's gonna be like, anyway, we're not gonna describe the trip. <laughs> they're just gonna get there. And I adore that. He is my favorite classic author <laughs> for a reason. I will always love to read him. But Treasure Island, I read that directly after the graphic novel, so it kind of fit. I think I will read more of him, but just, just not yet. So there's nothing else to say here. This book is very, very concise in my opinion and I really enjoy his writing because he is unintentionally funny like sometimes he will just write a paragraph it wasn't supposed to be funny but the way he wrote it was funny like for example when Jim Hawkins 
is doing something anyway and he needs to go back to the island but on the rocks he sees seals and the way he describes the seals <laughs> was just so funny i won't spoil it for you so just read it but i don't know i just love his humor i love how magical and wondrous he is in so short a time because he doesn't dawdle <laughs> He really doesn't but he still manages to have a very beautiful writing style and I didn't know he was Scottish so that just kind of reinforces the fact that I need to live there because he's one of my favorite authors now and yeah I want to live there. Let us move on. Next up we have Vam by Igor Corde. I think Colm is just the original author of the book. Now this is the most famous I think actually Croatian like how do I say it, artist <laughs> who publishes graphic novels and draw drawings and stuff. I don't know much about it so this is just gonna be quick but I think he's the most famous one and I'm pretty sure this was actually translated into other languages. I haven't checked because obviously the original is in my native tongue so I didn't need to. But I picked this up because he is a wonderful artist. Like he is a really a wonderful artist. So I wanted to give it a shot and I loved the art. I'm going to try and find an example that's really gorgeous. I, near the end, there's a seat like this, for example, there. Like it's actually wonderful art, but I didn't like the story because it's and is going to be similar to another thing that I will talk about. It's pretty much like mythology. And the way that it tries a little too much to be a story. The way real mythology doesn't. This follows so many generations that you do not care about a single one of them. Like the art is that awesome and the concept is awesome. But since it is actually a story and not mythology. You're, you're supposed to care at least about someone. And I did not care about a single person in this novel graphic novel because it's just too quick you do not have the time to develop any of them or get to know them so it was emotionless but i loved the art which was pretty much the point of reading this i just would have really liked to actually enjoy the story itself now i forgot to mention but the great hunt and all of the <laughs> robert louis stevenson work and the graphic novels were all five stars so far this was not this was the first three star of the month. Three star is just fair because it's middle of the road. I didn't love it, didn't hate it, but I loved the art. So I can't really be a two star. But would I recommend it if you're foreign? I don't know. Maybe if you want to enjoy the art. But also considering that the original story that this is based on isn't our story, like Croatian, I don't think this is like a necessary reading, but you could pick it up if you want to because he really is a good artist. Finally, I get to talk about the last Bungo Stray Dogs light novel because I actually bought this one and I read it physically. Now, I loved this. <laughs> I finally loved one, like the last, I did not want the last one to leave a bad taste in my mouth, but I own two so far, I will buy the rest of them, but this is basically like a side story. Unlike all the other ones, which are mostly prequels or like alternate universes, this is actually like a side story. It wasn't necessary to the main plot. You don't really learn anything new new that's vital to the storyline. It There's a reason why they haven't adapted it, although I would love it if they adapted it. But it was really, really fun, really cool to read. And you do learn a lot about the characters and some of their abilities and their relationships which I appreciated but I feel like this one is pretty much if you're a fan not just if you're a casual viewer or reader it's like not required reading for the understanding of the world but it does add a lot and <laughs> I thought that this would finally be one where I wouldn't cry at all because a lot of these are like Dazai is in the spotlight a lot. I feel like in the light novels, if there's a novel without Dazai in it, it's a little weird. So far, I think he was in every single one. And this is one where I thought, okay, like Atsushi and the others are here. He won't really be the main character. I finally won't have to suffer. But then the last chapter happened. 
and the last arc happened and I did not know why that was necessary. Like I immediately cried and I was hoping that I wouldn't because I was like so close to the ending. So I was very pissed off that it actually managed to make me cry. But aside from that, this was excellent. Five stars. I highly recommend it. It was definitely worth it. And I think, as I said many times before, for as long as I've been reading these novels, Kafka Sagiri's writing is well suited for novels. I will compare it to Tokyo Ghoul because it's closest now. His writing, for example, because he draws and writes the manga, is perfect for what he does. I don't think he would really be able to write novels as well as he does because novels really, really are his cup of tea, but manga was <laughs> Suisha's cup of tea. So I think you really need to stick to what you're good at. That's why the manga is god awful and six out of the seven novels that I read were immaculate five stars. So I think he should come out with more novels and just finish the manga already somehow. I have a bone to pick with the next one and it will be very, 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 very unpopular. Circe by Madeline Miller. I already ranted in my vlog, but we will do it again. I hated this. I this I gave it a one star. I do not remember the last time I gave a book a one, one star. I mean, I do. But it's very rare for me because really bad books always go into two stars. But if they manage to get me very angry or hurt or something that is like below just this is objectively bad, I give it a one star. Now this would have been objectively bad had it not managed to make me angry. Do not even try and explain to me why you like this because even though I respect it, obviously I do, we all have different opinions. I will not understand this. I have no single reason to understand why someone would praise this book. So while I respect it, I do not understand it and I never will. Obviously there's something there that I just refuse to acknowledge. But why I hated this book was because it was trying way too hard to be something that it obviously wasn't. It read like mythology, again like Vam, in the way that you do not care about anyone. Anyone, because it's very heartless and soulless and just telling you stuff without letting it develop. Because she is building this off actual mythology, so she didn't make it up. But it also really tries hard to drive home the fact that this is supposed to be a feminist book. And she managed to make it the opposite. It's very, very, very misogynistic instead. And I'm not usually a person that hates that. Like hates it so much that I need to stop reading. I don't usually care about it. But considering that I didn't like anything else in this book, it was really jarring. Like it read like old mythology mixed in with modern crap. And it just did not sit well with me. I absolutely detested it. She uses so many tropes to make women stronger that are just disgusting and frankly an abomination to literature. <laughs> so yes, I absolutely despise this. I wanted to give Madeline Miller a try because everyone raves about her so much that I thought it fair to try her out. But it just made me angry. It didn't make me feel anything until it made me angry. There were three separate times throughout this book, if not four, where I wanted to just throw it out of the window. I was contemplating DNFing it after like a hundred pages or so. Like there was a particular scene that I did not think was necessary. I wanted to throw it out the window and never read it again, but since it's a standalone, it's easier to force yourself to finish it because I hate unfinished books or not finishing books. No matter how much I like DNFing, like I hate it. And especially if it's a standalone, it's way harder to give up. Like it's not a series where you get to quit because there are seven more books until the resolution. I wanted to see how it ended. But when I started read, when I stopped reading and just skimming to get to the point of each chapter, that's when she lost me. That is when she lost me completely. <laughs> and that's j just not good. Does she write beautifully? Yes. But that is the last thing on my list of criteria that authors need to fulfill. 
like the actual last. So if she writes beautiful but hollow stories, then I have nothing else to say but one star will not be reading it again. I do not understand why she is so overhyped. I will not be picking up another one, another book of hers. And if you enjoy it, good for you. But keep that opinion away from me because I will just get upset again. I threw this onto the pile of books that I plan to sell instantly. I was, I can tell that I was ranting about this for a while, but I wanted to be a little concise considering that it's such a beloved book. If you want more details, just go to Goodreads. <laughs> we finally have something I liked to talk about. That's Tokyo Ghoul Past by Shintawada. I think the only thing that was actually by Tsuishida was the art, I think at least, if I'm not mistaken. But this is the last novel. Why did I get the last novel? Because as far as I saw, it's irrelevant to which order you read them in. And this one interested me the most and it was most expensive. So I got that one while I had the discount code on Book Depository. It came a little bit damaged, but we will not talk about that because everything on the inside is intact. So I don't care. I got a partial refund. <laughs> but this is a novel about... It's a prequel novel. It's about many characters before the main story. And it was a little short for my liking. Like it was like snippets of events because I think that the author didn't want to take too many liberties with the past of these characters, which I respect. But he did work alongside Suishida a lot. Like he checked everything that he was doing. So I don't think he needed to, I don't think he needed to be that careful. I think this could have been longer. But I still enjoyed it a lot and my favorite obviously was the Kaneki and Hide one. I, my heart was so full after reading that one. I am not even kidding. I just felt instantly happier. It was a little sad at some point but it made me happier. So this was definitely a hit. I plan to get the other ones but honestly I just hope that the other ones are a little longer because this was <laughs> short for my too short. I gave it five stars and I recommend it. I think that if you like Tokyo Ghoul and you want to consume everything in that world like I do I'm slowly making my way through everything that I haven't read yet I think it's worth it you don't necessarily have to buy it you can probably find it online but I definitely think it's worth it a little bit a little bit of a like a taste <laughs> of what they did before the main series Tokus was really sad too for some reason I didn't cry once in this but it was kind of sad now the next one is another graphic novel. This is Halloween weekend we are entering into now. We have The Witch or like, Stria in Italian. This is Italian. This is a translation so it says witch. But this was a graphic novel that's this one isn't in color like it's it's like that. This one isn't in color but I still really really enjoyed it. I like graphic novels more than comics because I like stories that like have the end <laughs> in sight because it really annoys me when there's like 300 volumes and it's still ongoing. <sighs> wrap it up like wrap it up. There's a reason why Supernatural is something that I never finished. So I really enjoyed this. It was like a short mystery and Supernatural like it's not I won't spoil anything because I think that's kind of pointless and actually kind of rude with the this kind of genre but I really really liked I, let's just hold it up on this side for once I really liked the combination of supernatural elements and the mystery it was really engaging I will say that I didn't love the ending that much I would have preferred it if it was different <laughs> this is hard to do without spoilers do I recommend it if it exists in English Yes, but I wouldn't be too excited about the supernatural elements. That is all that I will say. I feel like that's already saying too much. Four stars. I enjoyed it. Really didn't love it. And the main character is called Kiara, like K-J-A-R-A, -A, like I am. That was a little bit weird every time someone called out to her or something. I was a little bit confused, but... It was fun. I never ever saw my name in a book so it was kind of fun. Next up I read two of the Penny Dreadfuls. I will read them out to you so you know which ones they are but it's all my good reads. I read Aurelia or the Tale of a Ghoul by E.T.A. Hoffman and I read 
The Duelist or The Death Doom of the Double Born by Bram Stoker. The problem with these was that they both sucked, <laughs> which was a little bit sad. Aurelia was so underwhelming, it wasn't even scary. Like, the ending is maybe a bit spooky, but not really what I wanted for Halloween. Like, it was a bit lame, if I'm being honest. So, that wasn't really, that wasn't really a hit. And it was very short, so I might give it, like, I'd give it a try. I would recommend it, but it's honestly not that spooky and was a little bit underwhelming. I think I gave that, yeah, three stars just average and the one by Bram Stoker was frankly disgusting I never thought of horror as something that's disgusting I wanted to be eerie and spooky and make me uncomfortable and make me scared to look out into the shadows or something this was not that this was just disgusting and frankly a little bit sick I know Bram Stoker I don't know Bram Stoker aside from Dracula but maybe he was a little bit mentally ill when he was writing this because it was frankly just disturbing and not not scary just like ew just ew trigger for animal cruelty and <laughs> child cruelty and like frankly this whole thing is a trigger warning that I would not do to myself again thank god it was that short but I gave that one two stars a very generous like one and a half star penny dreadfuls have been a hit or miss for me like it's a great compendium but they've been a hit or a miss for me because some of them are not spooky they're just gross and the others are pretty cool but I don't think I've even read half of them at this point so verdict is still out in this collection but it was okay to get me in the mood on Halloween day. This fake hair is ruining me a little bit it's hard to contain and the last thing that I actually finished was this and I'm not sure what to call that in English it's still in dog but it's I guess the title would be nameless. But the original is Italian, so I, I guess the title would be Nameless. This is one of the longer, longer volumes. I've never read Dylan Dog before, but I mean, this is all of these graphic novels and stories are all my dad's collection. He collects graphic novels, comics, and all that kind of stuff. Like he has an entire room of it, so I sometimes go there and steal something or ask him for a recommendation. Today or today on Halloween, I asked him for spooky recommendations in particular and he gave me this and honestly it delivered I gave it five stars it was excellent this is also like this this format this actual classic comic format but I loved it it was actually so creatively spooky that I appreciated it so much <laughs> the plot is pretty much why he should why he, he wanted to quit what he was doing and the entire universe conspired to convince him that he can't do that and it was very creative in my opinion how they did it because the different jobs that he applies to and how they pull him back in was really really fun to read so this was definitely a hit and if you can find it somewhere like a lot of these I read in my native tongue which is very rare for me but because a lot of the comics that he has are in his name in our native tongue because none of us read Italian aside from him so why would he buy them in Italian so yeah if there's an English translation for this pick it up but if not I'm sorry <laughs> I I actually really enjoyed it so and I mean yay for me reading the language that I'm supposed to know better than English but I guess <laughs> that went to hell aside from this month this thing is just falling falling down Lastly, I also, if you want to, I did a Tokyo Ghoul costume for Instagram featuring some of these items, but I haven't uploaded it on my YouTube Instagram, so I am plugging this for no reason. I might upload it on my YouTube Instagram. I'll see. Anyway, lastly, I want to talk about books that I am currently reading, so this will not have a star rating or anything, or my thoughts, this will just be an update more because aside from vlogs this is pretty much the only way that I can communicate what I'm reading. I've been reading Asimov or The Complete Robot. I got like a hundred pages in ish. A hundred page pages in. I haven't made that much progress since the vlog because I was reading all the Halloween stuff. Loving Asimov and I want to I want to read Possessed. 
by Gretchen McNeil because these are so well loved. Like I adored them. They got me back into reading before Red Queen. That was, Gretchen McNeil was the only thing that I read in between my slump <laughs> and Red Queen. This is like very short. The, f the spacing is very wide. But I really want to give it another try because I remember loving it so much and I was supposed to read it on Halloween. I did not, so I will be reading this very soon. I got like two pages in if we're gonna be honest. So more updates in the vlog or in the next wrap up, I guess, but I'm really looking forward to see, seeing what I still think about her. And that is kind of it. That is kind of it. This was lengthy, but also short at the same time. I don't think I talked too much about them. So ask me if you want to know anything else about any of these books. <laughs> now, this is it kind of for the video. I hope you enjoyed it and it was fun. Let me know how you liked October and spooky season, How you, what you read. It might have been eerie or just plain horrifying. I don't know. Halloween weekend itself did not go well for me because daylight savings kicked in. And I always feel like shit <laughs> after that because I do not function well when it gets dark at five o'clock in the afternoon. So yeah, weekend, Halloween weekend was shit for me. The only highlight was when I played my comfort anime and that had nothing to do with Halloween because it's a comedy. <laughs> but anyway, I've been rambling. I hope this was fun to listen to and maybe you got some recommendations because a lot of these are not generic because a lot of these aren't English, <laughs> which is, I guess, the life of anyone whose native tongue isn't English, you're gonna know about a lot of stuff that the general international populace doesn't. But I still hope it was somehow entertaining. I'm gonna have to take down the decorations, which honestly I hate because I love them. Like I got these little skeletons and the cobwebs all over my shelves and the little pumpkins. <sighs> but spooky season is over and we are entering NaNoWriMo, so in November, I guess, because this class that I'm taking right now is a bit easier. In November, expect a lot of writing updates, writing vlogs, maybe even a writing advice video and other random videos, but NaNoWriMo is gonna kick me in the ass. So in any case, good luck if you're participating. Let me know what you read in October and I will see you in the next video.